Hey everybody, so the rise and fall of rock and roll video I posted a while back got more than a few responses and I figured a follow-up was due. First and foremost, I would like to thank and congratulate the large number of viewers who actually understood that I was talking about mainstream dominance. Second, to those who responded by claiming I missed the 90s or that I disrespected the 90s music scene, I say no. No, I didn't. I lived through the 90s scene just like you did. It wasn't a secret time where bands played outlawed music on outlawed instruments in hidden basements making secret recordings that they only said to you personally. No, it wasn't that at all. Anyone with the opinion that the 90s had a substantial mainstream impact is ignoring just how dominant rock and roll used to be. So I'm gonna explain now just how wrong you truly are. In the 50s, until Elvis joined the military, his musical influence set off a string of international moral panics, protests, and riots. Parents struggled and fought to protect their children from his debaucherous lifestyle. When the Beatles arrived, the hype was so fanatical that some cities shut down as mobs lined the roadways just to see the Beatles drive by. In the 60s, the Beatles also set off a string of moral panics, protests, and riots when they talked about using drugs and observed that they were as well known as Jesus, which they were. And to be clear, such was the power of rock and roll that all of the morons who ran out to burn, smash, and destroy Beatles records, they all eventually hopped back in the car, listening to Beatles on the radio while on their way to the record shop to replace their smashed albums. It was also rock and roll's cultural impact and overall dominance that connected it with the satanic panic of the 80s, which led to lawsuits being filed and congressional hearings being held to discuss censoring music. Because groups who didn't listen to the music decided they needed to protect you from it. What we haven't seen since the 90s in music is anything like what came before. The world has moved on from music almost entirely. Third, a few people were silly enough to mention individual bands like Pantera as counterpoints while forgetting that Pantera was formed in 1981 and had its greatest success with 1990s Cowboys from Hell, as in before the Black Album. And while Pantera and the other mentioned bands were a thing, this discussion was about mainstream dominance and the cultural influence that comes along with it. Metallica's Black Album led to a seven-year international tour. It went platinum 16 times in the US and charted at number one across North America, Europe, and Japan. The only place it failed was Ireland. And it was still selling 5,000 albums a week as of 2016. Now, to those crying, but what is that? I get it. Every generation has its own influence and they are no less important to you than previous music was to previous generations. But that doesn't change the fact that no rock and roll album has dominated like the Black Album since its release. It just hasn't happened. Finally, a popular comment regarding the demise of rock and roll was that it's lost its teeth. And in response, I'll say that it's little more than a romantic platitude. First off, by 1991, rock and roll had explored all that it could be. It had gone full circle and back again, which is part of the reason why grunge was so regressive. Rock and roll got old. The genre sold its soul to pay for dentures, that price being artistic independence. I will agree that today's 360 deals do limit an artist's ability to express themselves, if not outright dictate how they can do it. What really happened to rock and roll after a fantastic 40 year run was that's it. Just like its audience, it got old. From pelvic thrusts to drugs to anti-religion, anti-institution, violence and aggression, the truth is variations of mainstream dominance aren't infinite. You have to work within a spectrum, otherwise you lose more than you gain. And once the ideas ran out, we got the rapid recycling of old ideas in the form of hyperculturalism.